So you may know that the PlayStation 2 was the best-selling console of all time, hands down, and it had, as such, a ton of games for it, literally and figuratively tons of games. That's old news, but what you may not know is that a lot of these games had what was called padded files, or dummy files, that were placed there for various reasons, in some cases for authentication or security or whatever else. Which means that more than likely your backed up PlayStation 2 file or files have these padded or dummy files in them and they're starting to take up some valuable space on your storage device. So today using Silk Calibur 3 as our example, I'm going to show you how to take these backed up image files. In this case with this game, it's coming in at a little lofty 4 gigs. And we're going to go ahead and trim them down to something like this. Where it's now taking up just 3 gigs. And while that doesn't sound like a whole lot, it's one whole gig out of 4. That's 25% less space that it's taking up. On some of these image files, it can be 35, 40, even 50%. And in some cases, even more than that. I'm going to show you two methods. And we're going to do it all without compromising the games at all. That's coming up next. Hey everybody and welcome to the video. Before we even continue, of course we're dealing with emulation stuff, so I posted up some of the legal mumbo jumbo here. Feel free to pause the video or you can go down in the description and read it there. All right, and there's a lot to cover today, guys, so let's jump to the next thing here. I just need to let you know that uh, not all games will have padded or dummy files. Only some of them will. Uh, trimmed ISOs should work on any PS2 emulator that can play regular PS2 backed up files such as ISO and bin files. Uh, like PCSX for the PC or a modded jailbroken PS3, which is what we're going to be using today. Um, these trimmed files should work fine in those emulators. Uh, do not delete the original ISO or bin file until you've determined that the trimmed game uh, is working and you know has been tested. And last, this can be combined with the upcoming video I'm going to do that shows you how to insert cheats into a PS2 backed up game. Basically there, we're going to have to open up the ISO just like we're doing here. We're going to insert some files and then we're going to close it back up. So technically you can do the trimming first, then insert those files and then close everything up. So you're killing two birds with one stone. All right, let's move on to the next thing. And down in the description, you'll find a couple links where you can download a zip file from. And in the zip file, you will find four folders. Uh, there's one, two, three. Uh, that are marked and then the last one just says expert installer the expert installer will be the one uh, that program will be the one that we use in case the first method doesn't work in order to trim our files uh, number two and number three is what we're also going to be using to compile our ISOs and they're old programs but they work great still and we're going to be using them in the next uh, emulation video with our PS2 cheat stuff. And then there's ISO Buster. You can use the ISO Buster I have included here, but really you can use any type of program that can extract files from a bin or an ISO. I like ISO Buster because it pretty much usually finds all the hidden files as well within these PS2 um, ISO and bin images. Um, but you can use any one that you want. And the last thing we're going to need that is not listed on here is a notepad program. You can use the one that comes with your PC, or in this case, I'm going to be using Notepad++, which I've already talked about before in some of the other videos. All right, so now I have this folder that I set up with all the downloaded files and everything installed and everything, so I made shortcuts or set them up just in one folder so everything is easy to find. Um, we'll be using so Calibur 3. Uh, for the PS2 as our example here today. Let's go ahead and make a new folder on your desktop. You can call it whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to call it SC3 for Soul Calibur 3 and just put PS2. All right. And now let's go into that folder we just created. As you can see, it's all nice and blank. Now let's go and open up ISO Buster. And by the way, we are starting with the easy method first. And if this window ever pops up, it's going to open up a... Um, 
a web page for you to buy the full program just close it out all right and now that ISO Buster is open let's go ahead and drag the ISO game into this first window pane and then you're always going to click on the red box that says ISO and here you'll be presented with all the files we're going to highlight them and then we're going to drag and drop them into this newly created folder that we just made and we're going to always hit continue here and the speed at which they transfer, of course, depends on your PC, but also depends on the size of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward now. So now that that's finished, you can see the files here uh, got extracted and copied over into this folder. And now you need to play detective a little bit. Uh, most of the time, these are really easy to spot because they will say uh, pad or padded or dummy. Um, it's something to that effect right in the file name. Sometimes like this one, they will end in .dat or they will end in .000 or .001, but they usually say pad, padded, or dummy. In this case, it says pad underscore zero um, dot .dat, and it's a perfect one gig, and that's kind of a giveaway too because these files usually don't have a perfect size, like 500 megabytes or perfect one gig. Um, so that's kind of a giveaway. The other thing is that we can mess with these files all we want. Remember, these are copies of the files that are in this ISO. So we can mess with these files all we want, and you don't have to worry that your original ISO is going to get messed up. All we did was take and copy the files out into this folder. So you can mess with it all we want. And just to show you how easy this first method really is, let's go ahead and open up uh, whatever notepad program you're going to use. Okay, and we don't have to do pretty much anything here. Let's go to File and click on Save As, and we are pretty much going to name it exactly as this file here and replace it. So let's locate the uh, folder on the desktop. <clears throat> and there it is right there. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and just click on it, and the name will show up, and we're just going to click Save. And it's going to ask us to replace it and just hit yes. Now we can go ahead and close this. And as you can see, instead of being 1 gig, it's now 0 KB. And that's pretty much it. Now all we have to do is uh, button everything back up. And this next part is ultra important. When you copied your files over from ISO Buster onto your folder on your desktop, they should have copied in the exact same order as they are displayed on ISO Buster. So look over them and make sure that each file is in the exact same order. Even your, um, uh, your altered file should be in the exact same spot as it was before, which it is. And so once you've confirmed that it matches ISO Buster, then you can go ahead and proceed. What we're going to do now is we can go ahead and highlight all of these files, and we're going to drag them to this large window here on CD DVD ROM generator. But you notice that it didn't copy them in order. Now for you, it may copy them in order, and that's great. But if it doesn't, then you need to make sure that they are in order. So what I'm going to do here is I can see that they're completely out of order. So I'm just going to close the program. I'm going to go back into it. And I'm going to have to go ahead and start with this top file. And I'm going to have to drag them over one by one from top to bottom so that the order matches. All right, and now that we're done and you've confirmed that they're in the exact same order as your folder, you can actually go ahead and close out of your folder. And now we're going to move on to the next step. So in this next step, I want you to pay attention here because you're always going to have the game ID that will be here. It'll be in a file. In this case, um, it's SLUS. Sometimes it can be SLJP or SL. Um, ES and that just marks the region of the game. This is actually the game's ID. So what we're going to do is you're going to make a note of the way that it is there. Okay, so it's SLUS 21216. Easy to remember. Let's go to volume and right here where it says this name, we're going to type in those first four letters exactly the way they are. In this case, SLUS. And then in the second box, we're going to type in the five digits without the period. So 21216, then in 
produce a name, we're going to hit PlayStation. And then here in license area, this is a game that was released in the USA. So we're going to hit America. If it was a European game, we would hit Europe. If it was a Japan region game, you would hit Japan. In this case, it's a US release. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go here to our desktop. And I suggest that you make a folder called one mil. You can call it anything you want. I already named it here, but let me show you it again. Let's go here. I'm going to click on folder. Hit the number one and then M-I-L and you'll see why in a minute. So let's move that over and then we're going to go here to file. You're going to hit export IML file and you're going to look for that one mil folder. So when we go over to our desktop, it should be right there on top because we put a one in front of it. So let's go ahead and double click it. And now here, just create any name you want for your IML file. Honestly, it doesn't matter because we're going to be changing it anyway. I'm going to call it SC3 for Soul Calibur 3 and then PS2. Never put any spaces, no underscores, no other characters. Use only numbers and letters, and that's pretty much it. But you don't need to do, you don't need to go crazy here because we're going to rename it anyway. Go ahead and click Save. And now when you go into your 1 mil folder, you should see an IML file and an IMS file, and that's exactly what we want, right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we can close out of this, hit no, and we're going to go to our next program, which is the number three folder, G-N-I-E, I-M-L-2 ISO, and we're going to click the EXE file. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and click on open, and you're going to direct it to that one mil folder that you created on your desktop going to click on the IML file. Don't worry, the IM2 file or IMS file, whatever it is, will not show up here. And that's perfectly normal. Hit open. And then we are going to click on IML to ISO. As soon as you click that, that's what's going to create our new ISO. So let's go ahead and click that. So once that's finished, you can go ahead and close out of everything. We're going to go into that one mil folder. And you should see your newly created trimmed ISO right there. It's going to be named the same thing as your IML file, but that doesn't matter because you can go ahead and you can change the name of the ISO right now to anything you want. And you can now use this ISO in any of your applications. Once you've confirmed that it's working in whatever application you're using it in, then you can go ahead and if you like, delete the original ISO. So now let's go ahead and cover the second method. This one involves using only one program, which is the expert uh, program. And let's go ahead and get started with that in the event that this first method didn't work. Okay, so as you can see, I've gotten rid of all the stuff from the first method because it's like as though we're starting from scratch. So let's go ahead and make a new folder. And we're just going to call that Soul Calibur 3, or as I did before, SC3 PS2 and let's stick our ISO in there and if you want to find it a little bit faster let's put a 1 in front of it so it goes up to the top all right let's go ahead now and open up the expert uh, program which is included in the zip file and included in that zip file I also have a cheat sheet and this cheat sheet, I'm going to leave it open here so we can follow along. Now, once this program is open, we're going to go ahead and come here to the plugin section. And you're going to pick this one here, the PS2 CD DVD 5 PSP UMD ISO Shrinker version 1.04 ISO. Damn, that was long. It's right here on the cheat sheet. Go over to sound options and pick S Trumpet 1 Wave. That's not on the sound options, but I've noticed that... If you don't pick it, sometimes at the end, if there's no sound picked, it'll kind of glitch up. So, I don't know. Anyway, let's go over here to open an image file. And you're going to direct it to your um, ISO. So, um, here it is. 1 SC3 PS2. And there's the So Calibur 3 ISO. Double click on it. Now, once we've done that, we're going to come up here to this first box. 
which is extract LBA, and we're going to click that. And it's going to give us that. Hit OK. Now what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to click the extract file button, which is the second one. I kind of like the way this is set up because it goes kind of in order here. So click on the second square and then just wait out the process. All right, so now that's uh, finished. Once it's done, what we're going to do next is we're going to go into the tools um, button up here and we're going to go and select relinker. So go ahead and click that. And when you click on that, we're going to go ahead and click the open button. And then it should bring you right here to your folder. And you're going to see uh, a couple of text files. The one you want to select is the one that ends in dot ISO dash LSN dash TX. Let's go ahead and click on that. Then we're going to go ahead and click the load button right here. And then we are going to click OK. Now basically here you're going to do the same thing that we did in the first method. You're going to look for the file that says dummy or pad or padded, whatever, same guidelines. Now in this case the file name is right here in the middle and see it says pad underscore zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a check mark right next to that file because we suspect that's the dummy file. Right? Now once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and we are going to go up here to where it says dummy slash level and we're going to make sure that this is selected to zero bytes, which it is. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and right click on this pad file and we are going to go ahead and pick replace selected files with dummy. And then hit OK. Now we're going to go ahead and click on exit. And then we are going to click on the box that says rebuild LBA. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to click on rebuild file. Okay, now that that's done, we'll hit OK there. And then now we will go ahead and click on Rebuild LBA. And that's pretty much it. That one happens very quickly. And that's it. You're done. So your ISO is now finished. You can go ahead and close out of that, close out of this. Let's go into that SE3 PS2 folder and your new ISO will be the same name as your ISO but with the word new in front of it and it will be all caps and so this is now our new one as you can see it's three gigs instead of the four so you can go ahead and try it out in whatever application you want and make sure that it works and once you confirm that it works just like before you can then go ahead and delete your original ISO if you want. All right, guys, sorry this was so long. Hope it helped you out. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe, and we're going to see you on the next one. And remember, too, that in the next video, we're going to show you how to inject cheats into these ISOs. So before you start going crazy resizing your ISOs, you may want to wait for that video or check out that video if it's already been posted. I should put the link in the description when it comes out. And then you can go ahead and do this first. Insert those files I'm going to show you from that video. You can insert them here and then you can uh, close everything up again. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.